Is that a deal breaker? No. That's why I'm here today. She's my girl. He's his wife, an alcoholic, who hired a hitman. Try to have him murdered? No. Drinking is one thing. Trying to have you murdered is another. The accusation. So you're saying the police were there and the hitman ran out in front of them? Yes, sir. If you really believe the woman tried to have you murdered, what do you chat about over Raisin Bran? I just try to not believe my own hype. You either believe it or you don't. The reality. She can't order lunch, let alone a hit, man. Let's do it. Now the show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. Get ready to take care of you. Tommy says he and his wife, Rachel, have been together for 31 years, but for the last three years, he believes that she has been hiding some serious secrets from him. He claims she has been cheating on him with multiple men she meets on the street and online. It says it even gets worse. Tommy believes his wife hired a hitman to have him killed so she could be with one of those other men. Tommy says after her failed murder attempt, she fled to her aunt's home and denied all allegations. Now he says Rachel has since returned home, but refuses to admit the truth. Take a look. I've suspected that my wife has been cheating on me for the last 10 years. I've accused Rachel of uh, cheating with co-workers, meeting with strangers, putting herself in promiscuous situations while she was incoherent and chatting online. Three years ago, my suspicions intensified. Time at work missing had escalated. Her drinking had escalated. She would just disappear, either on foot or with the car. What could have been a 30-minute trip to the store and back turned into a six to 10 hour excursion to try to find Rachel. One time I looked on Rachel's chat, there were comments like, I can't wait to meet you. If I do, I'm gonna rip your clothes off. Recently, she did take a selfie and sent it to me. This is just a selfie that Rachel took. Uh, highly unusual for Rachel to take selfies. Later, there was a reference in the chat log about I would do anything for those lips. It reminded me of the selfie that she took. There was even a time that I believed that my wife hired somebody to kill me and possibly with somebody that she had been drinking with or chatting with online. But she does not admit anything. It's 100% complete denial. I hope that my accusations are wrong. I hope that my wife is not cheating on me. If things don't change. Our relationship is going to continue forever, exactly like it is, filled with alcoholism, sadness, fake accusations, and just no happiness. Okay. Tommy, how are you, sir? I'm okay. How are you? I'm okay. Now, you guys have been married for 30 years? Yes, sir. 31. All right. And um, how's it gone? Has there been phases here? Or has this been a downward trend from day one? Was there a good phase, a good time where the two of you were happy? There was the first 15 years that we were together. There was no alcohol, no drug use, no problems at all. We never said a cross word, never even had a single argument for the and first 15 years. what happened years. At the 15th year? We moved to Los Angeles for a job uh -huh. that separated her from her family. Uh, she uh, socialized with some co-workers who uh, had a few glasses of wine at lunch and other things. Uh -huh. uh, apparently she liked that and then began to secretly drink behind my back. Uh, and that was about 12 years ago and it's never stopped. And you don't drink? And not, no. Not like she drinks. Definitely not. So you're very suspect of her now. Extremely suspect. Okay. And she's not working at this point? Nope. She's been fired from every job she's had in the last 12 years for drinking on the job. Drinking is one thing. Uh, trying to have you murdered is another. It is indeed. And this happened when? May uh, 2021, Memorial Day weekend. Okay, so this has been within the last year. It has. And you said then she fled to her aunts. True. But then she came home. True. And you believe this? 
You, you oh, believe, absolutely. You, I, I, you know, I, I, gotta, I, I gotta tell you, if somebody tries to have me murdered, I, I don't know, the conversation just kind of dries up. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you really believe a woman tried to have you murdered, what do you chat about over Raisin Bran? You know, I just try to not believe my own hype. And I've been told I'm crazy and that it's outrageous so many times. So you don't believe it? Either I, you I do or you don't. She either tried to have you killed or she didn't. You either believe it or you don't. I mean, in the moment, there was no question in my mind. Um, no question uh, in my mind. But later, you're not sure? Later, I'm just not sure. How, like you say, how can it be? How can she be such a great actress, sir? And how could I be so wrong? And how could all this happen? And I was compelled to, when she did come back, one of the stipulations that I had was we are going to have to do a lie detector test. And we're going to have to find out whether you tried to kill me or not. Uh, we pursued that, went and took the lie detector test. And my efforts blew up in my face because it came back inconclusive and I was still left with the same bag. And when you did this polygraph test, you were in the room? I was. Well, that's not how that works. I understand that. That's exactly right. And so the nature of the test, the way the test was administered, uh, everything that I had learned and, and read about just didn't seem right. Uh, and so it was basically, again, left me with this big question. Was this real or did I make it up? You say that she allows herself to be put in situations that can turn into promiscuity. Can, she says she's never cheated on you. That's true. That's she what she told says. you That's never cheated on never. you. told us never cheated on you. When she, I mean, I've, I, I'm highly trained in deception detection. It's one of the things that I'm vertically developed in, and I've watched her video of her talking about that. She's not lying. She believes that she's never cheated on you. She's been found in, you know, parking lots, uh, libraries, uh, been to the emergency room more times than I can count. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and every time this would come up and I would try to compel her to kind of confront this and, and face it, uh, and she would deny it, and I'd say, okay, well, let's, let's do some research then, and let's put this behind us so that I can get this craziness out of my head and we can move on with the alcohol. Okay, issue. so if she tried to have you killed, is that a deal breaker? No, that's why I'm here today. I'm here to fight for my wife. So if she tried to have you killed, that's something you think you could get past? I know I can. Really? She's my girl. We've been together since we were in high school. So what, is there a point at which you would say enough's enough, too much is too much? Never. She's living my life. Okay. Well, Rachel says Tommy's accusations are just ridiculous. She says Tommy even set up cameras in their apartment to attempt to catch her cheating. Uh, so he's got cameras around. He called the police to come out when he said there was a hit man on the property. So with all of this going on, Surely he's got evidence. He's got data. So what has he found? We're going to find that out after the break, and we're going to meet her. We'll be right back. My husband told me he thinks that I slept with his boss, his coworkers. He thinks I'm a slut, you know, well, told me he accused me of hiring somebody to kill him. I don't know why he would think I would want him dead. I've been with him for 30 years. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Almost two years after George Floyd's murder. What's changed for black Americans? The problem is systemic racism. Mass incarceration, police brutality. In a week, in a black community, feel what we feel, see what we see. How can white allies help in the black community? Invest, provide opportunity. Are you going to give me some of that macaroni and cheese or oh. not? That's Monday. There was a time that Rachel called me from a hotel. They were having a going away party for her. It was just a party of two or three, and they got drunk and found their way up to a hotel room. The other two had ideas of some sort. She didn't go through with it, but then called me for a ride to pick her up. That is an example of when I become insecure and make accusations of cheating. Rachel says Tommy's accusations that she has cheated, and even worse, hired a hitman to have him killed, or, well, she just says they're ridiculous. They've been together for over 30 years, and she says, if I wanted to get rid of him, 
don't you think I'd have gotten him dead by now? Uh, take a look. My husband told me he thinks that I slept with everybody in his life. His boss, his coworkers, anybody that he works with, he thinks I've slept with. He has accused me of cheating. But every time I call him when I'm on break, I'm at work, and somebody honks in the background, he's like, oh, they're honking at you. But that's not true. <laughs> I'm just walking down the street. I tell him I'm going to go to the store to get booze. He feels like I'm going to sleep with someone every time I go to the liquor store. He thinks I'm a slut and a whore. I have never, ever, ever, ever cheated on Tommy in my entire life. Tommy has all my emails and passwords and everything on my phone. If there is someone that can prove that was me chatting, I don't chat. I don't go online. It's not me. My wife's drinking and lies has really exasperated these accusations. There's cameras in the house. There are my little two cameras in the house. One kind of watching the front door, and the other one just kind of the room in general. They've never produced anything. Tommy accused me of hiring somebody to kill him. You want to talk about the guy in the laundry room and the shotgun? In fact, he cowered out, took advantage of me, didn't get the job done. You're wrong. I did not hire a hitman to kill my husband. I don't know why he would think I would want him dead. I've been with him for 30 years. I 100% believe that she's not being completely honest with me yet. If things don't change with Tommy, I'm afraid that we're going to get a divorce. And we should be together. Always. Rachel, good morning. Hi. How are you? I'm okay. Did you try to have him murdered? <laughs> no. Why not? I love him. I would never, ever, ever do that. I don't know even where that concept comes from. Here's what Tommy says happened the day he claims Rachel hired a hitman in an attempt to murder him. Take a look. You want to pay attention to this. Uh, this is where we were parked, uh, returning from grocery shopping. This is where the pickup truck that I had noticed following me before was parked. As we came in uh, here, we saw that the laundry room had been closed uh, with a torn cardboard handwritten sign. And there was somebody lying in wait here, as you can see, is a nice clear view with the door shut on the inside. But as you walk past on the outside, it's impossible to see inside. So that's where they were at. Where we had the groceries in hand. We went into the apartment to unload. My suspicions were already aroused this particular day because my wife's kind of just general attitude kind of made me feel like something was going on and I wasn't sure what it was. You know, just got into my head and just that I really did believe that there was somebody in that laundry room that I dialed 911 and called the police. As we were talking to the police, the gunman ran out of that door and out in the alley and was kind of let go. I think 10 years of pressure and drinking, she could be looking for a way out of the marriage and thought that that might have been the easiest way. Didn't happen. Mm -mm. No, now, I assume, and you called the police. Yes, sir. Okay, so did you file a complaint for attempted murder or conspiracy to commit murder or? There was no opportunity for that. Uh, I was basically dismissed as being crazy from the initial interaction with the police. They just offered me a, a place to go to get away from the situation. They offered you a place to go, but not a hotel. No, it was a mental facility. A mental facility. That's not offering you a ride to get away from her. That's <laughs> taking you... That's taking you somewhere that you need to go because you need help. Yeah. Because they thought you were delusional. Yes, sir. And you said that while they were there, the hitman ran out he did indeed behind their backs not behind their backs they saw him and it was kind of my mistake when i called 911 i reported it as hey my wife's trying to kill me and so they came to the apartment what i should have done was said hey there's a gunman in my laundry room and drove the police to the laundry what room what you should have done is believe that your wife is not trying to kill you you're saying the police were there and the hitman ran out in front of them yes sir and I appealed even in the moment to stop that guy right there who just came out of that laundry room. That's who I'm calling about. And he was out that door and in that truck and gone. 
He and was hot footing it. He was, he was definitely hot footing it. And he took okay. out. Uh, there was no repairs done in the laundry room. The you sign. Have a gun with him or anything? I couldn't see. I couldn't see that. I mean, I wouldn't expect him to be like waving it over his head, but I mean. I couldn't see that. Okay. And did they see him run out? They did. And they didn't pursue him in any kind of way. Ask him or anything. Nothing. You, does that seem odd to you? I thought it was very odd, and I even appealed to the officers at the time and said, "Well, if this was role reversal, and my wife had called you and said I was trying to kill her, would we having the same conversation?" Because nothing. I'm not trying to do anything to you, Tommy. I love you. I love you. I'm not trying to kill you. Okay, so you, you have sons. Two boys. And you accuse them. I accuse them of being together in this. I just don't feel like she could have pulled this off without them knowing or, or understanding or seeing some sort of signals or sign. Okay, what is most likely here? Usually, the simplest explanation of a phenomenon is more often the best, you know, the simplest thing what is the most likely that your your sons and your wife are in a 
conspiracy with a hitman in the laundry room to knock you off, or of which you have no proof, or that you've become... I think that's, and that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm uncertain. I do also agree with that and agree with what you're saying. So as I even say it out loud and have been saying it out loud, it just sounds so absurd. Have, um, have there been any other attempts on your life? No. Have your boys ever aggressed against you in a, in a way that you thought they were trying to kill you? No. We don't have a great relationship. Uh, well, but, I, but have they ever tried to no. do anything like cut your brake lines or no. <laughs> no. run a hose from the car into your bedroom or no. anything? No. You don't have any evidence that they've ever tried to end your life? None. Have, have you ever found the, R Rachel and the boys and found drawings or anything where they were no. working up? Any evidence, any hard evidence? None. None. So all you have is just you just had a feeling that there was somebody behind the screen door and you, you just thought screen door's got a beat up piece of cardboard on it that says closed. If a hitman was trying to lure you in to a laundry room to kill you, wouldn't he put a sign on the door that said open? In Tommy, the, come in. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't in the, say in the closed. Moment, oh, yeah. In the moment. Stay away. In the moment, it felt uh, like he was going to pop out at any moment. And they were just trying to get me to go past that door the right time, the right way, so that he could jump out. Tommy says Rachel is rarely sober and has even accused Rachel of sleeping with people to get more alcohol. Now, when our team met Rachel, we were shocked and concerned to see how much she drinks every day. So we're going to drill down on that next because I'm not sure she always knows what she's doing. We'll be right back. I get up in the morning, I go to the liquor store. I drink about a pint a day. What'd you get? Fine. Uh -huh. I'm scared. I'm going to die. I need help. This year, Dr. Phil, almost two years after George Floyd's murder. What's changed for black Americans? The problem is systemic racism. Mass incarceration, police brutality. Spend a week in a black community. Feel what we feel. See what we see. How can white allies help in the black community? Invest. Provide opportunities. Are you going to give me some of that macaroni and cheese or oh. not? That's Monday. After the murder for hire incident, I requested Rachel take a polygraph test. Tommy was sitting in the room the whole time. I was nervous because Tommy was staring at me. They're like, okay, tell the truth. My desire was that she'd be able to pass that test so I could put that behind me and we could move on. I don't trust that test, and I don't think that I should have been put in that position. The lie detector test that my wife took proved to be inconclusive. It made me sad that she was unable to pass that test. I don't think that is a normal polygraph test, is it? Seems a little off to me. <laughs> well, Rachel says her husband, Tommy, is constantly accusing her of cheating or conspiring against him. We've just been talking about a, a murder for hire situation, which she completely denies, and he seems to have no evidence for other than an eerie feeling that somebody was behind a screen door in the laundry room. She says things are so bad that it's driving her to drink. So much so that she wakes up every morning having withdrawals from alcohol and begins her day by taking a walk, thank God, uh, instead of driving, to the liquor store to buy a pint of vodka. I drink every day, about a pint a day of vodka. I just want to show you what I've drank so far. is a half pint. That's about three glasses of wine in the box. Rachel started drinking excessively in about 2012, and she normally drinks a fifth or more of vodka a day and will make three to five trips to the liquor store daily. 
Here we are, our second trip. What'd you get? All right. Mm -hmm. I get up in the morning, I go to the liquor store. Then I come back home and go to sleep. Rachel's normally passed out when she drinks. There's no opportunity for life outside of the alcohol. I haven't done the dishes. I haven't cleaned my house. I haven't done laundry. Everything's a mess. I think I've read probably about five cars due to drinking. I've lost about that many jobs. I'm scared that I'm not going to make it through. I'm scared I'm going to die. I want to get excited about my life. I'm done with this. I need help. Rachel, um, we, we asked you about your, your drinking. Okay. And you said you wake up at 7, you throw up, withdrawals begin, you start shaking, and at 7.45, you walk to the liquor store yeah. for the first time, and you buy a pint of vodka. Yes. And you drink it. Yes. You go home and go to bed. Yes. I'll um, go back to sleep. Sometimes you say you go to the liquor store three times a day. Oh, well, because I go in the morning and then in the afternoon and then again for dinner. <laughs> That'd be three times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably around three. And times. you say you drink a pint a day. You say she I, drinks a fifth a day. I probably drink a lot more than. A, I'm sorry? I probably drink a lot more than a pint. You probably drink a lot more than a pint a day. The day we were there, um, at 10 a.m., you, you drank a pint plus a pint of wine. A wine based hard punch. Uh, at two, you had another pint. And at six, you purchased and then had another pint. Oh so you God. had three pints of vodka just that's the day we lot. were there. Yeah, that's a lot. Does that sound right? Okay. Um, you've been to rehab five times? Probably, yeah. How much have you had to drink today? Probably about a pint. You say you're not cheating on him. How do you know if you're drunk? I mean, if you're blackout that's drunk, the, how, how that's do you know? That's the I don't. I... You're putting yourself in jeopardy. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's and that's what he tells me all the time that um, I put myself out there and it's not good and I'm I'm just walking to go to the liquor store. Yeah, how far is it? It's it's only a ten minute walk. We're in a vicious cycle here. Uh, I'm going to examine all this when we come back. Tommy admits he enables his wife Rachel's drinking and buys her alcohol, but he says it's because he doesn't want her getting hurt on the street when she needs to get more. I 100% enable my wife drink. I ask him to give me more booze. Oh, yeah, that's a definite thing. I buy her alcohol every single time. And if I don't enable it, it's kind of hell to pay. Tommy will usually get up with me and get booze. We'll usually just walk to the store about 7 or 8 in the morning. Then I start my day. I tell Rachel that I despise be drinking and that I think it's bad for her and hate every part of it. Going to the liquor store to she get our morning punch. In a couple hours, I'll need to come back. And then one more time, usually before time gets off the I'm afraid that my cheating accusations have contributed even more to her alcoholism and has become the primary driver of it. If, if you do this at 8 a.m., by 10, your blood alcohol level is going to be 0.24. And at 0.24... Nausea, vomiting, emotional swings, partial loss of understanding, and you could be in a stupor. At that sound familiar? Okay, then you make another trip at 2 p.m., and now your blood alcohol level has dropped a little bit, but you buy a second pint by 5 p.m., your blood alcohol level is back up to 0. 
Now, understand you're legally drunk and unable to operate a motor vehicle at 0 0.08, but you're at 0.4 now. Severe central nervous system depression, coma, and possible death. Okay, now at 6 p.m., your blood alcohol level has d gone down a little bit because of metabolism, but you buy your third, you finish your third pint, your blood alcohol level is now 0.63, high possibility of death because your brain shuts down your respiratory system, and so it'll forget to breathe. That's why I can't breathe sometimes. I'm sorry? That's why I can't breathe sometimes at night. Yes, that's why you can't breathe sometimes. Your brain is suppressed to the point that it doesn't tell your lungs to breathe. You're at 0.63. Now, you understand that means that 63% of your blood is alcohol. That's what's going into your brain. The day we were there, you, you had three pints, plus you, you had some wine-based drinks to go along with it. I did. That's, that's enough to kill a horse. Are you trying to kill yourself? I hope not. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I keep doing it. I don't understand. I don't know. I need. I don't. I need to talk to someone. I don't know. You've talked like to someone. I think I you've talked it. to someone five times. You've been to rehab five times. Didn't your mother drink herself to death? Yes, she did. And you, you seriously think this woman tried to have you killed? She can't, moment, order, I she can't order lunch, let alone a hit man. Are you serious, Kami? Come on. Seriously, babe. This woman's not hiring a hit man. She can bear him down day. That, that, you need brain thinking. Seriously, this is not about you. I do understand that. And that's why I called the show. And I'm telling you straight up. Now, I can spend six months and ask you how you feel about that, or I can just tell you. This, you need to reframe your thinking. This woman is not trying to have you killed. She's trying to have herself killed. I believe that. And you're helping her. So why did Rachel relapse after five months of sobriety last year? I'm going to ask about that when we come back. Tuesday on an all-new Dr. Phil. He was starved to death by a religious group. He died in my arms. He was alive when they handed him back to The shocking details. The baby's body began to decompose. I couldn't leave him. That's Tuesday. Closed captioning provided by... Five times last year she was sober for five months before starting to drink again. I was still drunk. It hasn't worked at all. I do think uh, Rachel's provoked to, to drink because of me recently, but I did have a glass of wine and that gave her the permission to start drinking. Maybe he won't let me stop drinking. Rachel definitely needs to be in a better rehab facility. I think she kind of discredits the whole experience. I'm miserable every day of my life. I don't want to be like this. I have some good news and some bad news. The good news is she's not trying to have you killed. The bad news is she's slowly killing herself right before your eyes. And you're so self-absorbed that you're focusing on yourself and have some delusional thought pattern that she's trying to have you killed. And you need to hit the eject button on that because she's not trying to have you killed. She's killing herself right in front of you. Now, you, you can go get polygraphs or you can go look in the laundry room or whatever you want to do and, and entertain yourself with whatever drama you want to create. Or you can believe somebody that's telling you the truth. Do you believe me or do you believe this voice in your head? I 100% believe you.
you're accusing her of cheating, accusing her of cheating, accusing her of cheating. That's very self-indulgent. You're insecure, and I strongly suspect that you believe if she stopped drinking, if she got healthy, if she got robust, that you would be threatened. No, that's not true at all. I don't believe that. That's I believe true. that you, you, you fear she would need you less. You've got some kind of delusional thought in your mind that has distorted the fact that for some reason, this woman loves you. And you're missing out on that. I do feel that. I do feel that. And I'm not threatened. I was raised and been around strong, beautiful women my entire life. That's who I want to be with now. And that's who she is when she's not drinking. Look at, look at this <clears throat> old, old dog with this beautiful girl. And I've lived with that my whole life. Uh, and I love her to death. And, you know, you, you've got to make a decision about what you want to do, because I, I don't know what it is. You've got tiger blood or something, but you've, you, you look amazingly healthy for somebody that's doing what you're doing to yourself. You should look like nine miles a bad road, but you look amazingly healthy. I try. So you haven't gone over the high side yet. I suspect you're on the bubble. But, I mean, really, you... I don't know how my body keeps up. I don't know how it keeps up either, <laughs> but, I mean, you walked out here. You didn't fall off the runway. Yeah, you're it's a, you're it's having a coherent a conversation body. right now, and I know you're medicated with a, with a pint of vodka, but you need to titrate yourself off of this. I, I, I'm not your physician here, so I can't tell you, but I, if you just stop drinking cold turkey without medical supervision, that would probably create a really bad result for you. Rachel says she believes that if she fixes her issues with Tommy, her drinking issues will get better too. They're in a toxic cycle. I said they're playing into each other's bad points. What do I mean by that and how do they break this toxic cycle? I'm gonna be very specific about that after the break. Do you know love interest? If you're concerned about someone blinded by love, I want to hear from you. Log on to drphil.com or text Phil to 88500. That's Phil to 88500. The toll is great. The need is greater. The need to find comfort in the dark hours. The need to find hope in the cures. And that's why when others look away, we lean in. We're fighting alongside patients because we know one moment can change everything. But we need your help to make more moments of hope possible. Join our fight. Save lives. Because we are all stronger together. You're watching Fox 30. This is home. We are 30 years, right? Yes, sir. She could back the car over you. <laughs> hey, get something out of the trunk for me. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> she could have gotten rid of you in I'm 30 years if she wanted to. <laughs> I might be I'm not trying right. to give you suggestions here. <laughs> I know just, this. I told him this all Does time. it get me what I want and need? What you want and need is a happy marriage, right? Exactly. Does it protect and prolong my life? I mean, you're just so balled up here. What you have is a woman that loves you, a woman that needs you. So what can you do that will enhance the situation? So where do Tommy and Rachel go from here? If they're playing into each other's bad points, I've told him what he can do to control his thinking, to check his thinking against reality. But as a couple, what do they do? We'll be right back. Better skin from your body wash? Our website and subscribe to our newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. 
are, what do we need to do? We need to identify what's going on that's toxic. We got bad alcoholism in here. We may need some medication on your side. We need to decide what we want to replace these things in our relationship. We need to improve our communication. We need to eliminate toxic things. Now, to help you do that, I will set you up with a therapist for the two of you to set some goals so you can work through this and they can help you with this alcohol thing. But first, I want to help you with this medically. Now, I'll set you up through Doctor On Demand, which is a company my son and I started, and we can deal with it psychologically and medically, both. This is telemedicine, and they can help you right from your own home, and they can ha get you lab work done to find out exactly where you are. They can do e everything that you need done right there and set you up with a couples therapist that can start working with you right there in front of your, your own computer and, and get this rolling for you, and I will set that up for you right away today. Thank you, Dr. Cohn. Okay, and you can do this together. This isn't something that the two of you can do together. Okay, would you like to do that? Yes, I would love to. Very much. Would yes. it be nice to do something together that was constructive? <laughs> yeah. Okay, are you glad you came? Does this make I'm sense? Very glad I came. Good with you? Yes. Okay, I know when to stop talking. Now's the time. I thank you guys for coming. If you at home want your own doctor on demand,